today's um, Red Dane top tip is on is preparing a checklist for setting up your own bush dairy. So we're often asked, what do I need to start a bush dairy? So let me just go through some of the things that you need. The first is you need land. So um, how much land uh, and the type of land will determine how many cattle you can run. So generally with the extensive bush dairy, uh, which we're looking at today, these are extensive cows behind me, um, we are relying on the, the grass that we grow during the growing season with our seasonal calving. So that uh, the, the size of land and the type of grass that's, that grows um, in that area, obviously you can improve the grasses that grow there, but for a start, you need an, an area of um, big enough to grow um, a good amount of grass for the cattle that you have. So how many, how many cows can you carry on a certain area? That depends very much on the type of grass and, and how you manage that grass. But as a rough guideline, unimproved pastures in, in the high felts uh, in Zimbabwe, you need about four hectares per cow. Um, with improved pasture, like you see here, that can get down to almost four cows per hectare. Um, so there's a big variance depending on the type of pasture you have. So, number one, land. So here, here you need land for your pastures. And then we recommend you have an area of arable land where you can grow maize or sorghum to make um, silage to help to extend your lactation for when you don't have, um, when the grazing has run out and you need to be able to supplement your cows a bit further. Water, very, very important. Uh, preferably piped water because uh, carting it around in a truck or a tractor is very expensive. And then we need uh, obviously a way of supplying it to the cows. So in our case, we've got these mobile water troughs so that we can move it with the, with the cattle every day. Okay, the next thing is you need a means of milking your cows and uh, in this case this is one of the bigger bush dairies and this bush dairy can be run by a generator or the tractor PTO. So depending on the type of uh, setup you want, uh, you need to have a tractor uh, or a generator and a dairy. Um, to start off with, you don't need all of this stuff, you can use a hand milking dairy. Um, so. If, so what do you need to start? You need a means of milking. How complicated it's going to get depends on you and depends on the number of animals you have. Then the other thing you need is um, uh, something to carry your milk in. You need to be able to move your milk. So here we've got some cans. Uh, you can also have a, a, a tank on a trailer to move your milk to, the, um, to where you collect your milk. And that brings me to the next point. You need a storage for your for your milk when you're very or you need cooling cool storage for your milk should I say and um, when to start off with I've seen people just having a few cans putting them in a, a big chest freezer you can put them into a cold room but ideally you want to get to the point where you have a tank a proper cooling tank where you can st store your milk until your milk is collected just to put it to your list you need your strip cups you need your teat dip cups for keeping your hygiene and uh, other health and then you need uh, buckets you if you're hand milking obviously you need buckets to milk in, into which you then transfer to your cans um, in our case we have the buckets for rinsing the clusters between each cow to make sure we're not passing mastitis around also quite a list of consumables that you need down to things like vacuum pump oil for your vacuum pump um, on if you're milking with a machine and um, then your things like tea dip the actual um, we, we recommend you just use one uh, for post dipping and um, you also need your dairy chemicals uh, your uh, um, detergents and your sanitizers and milk stone remover you'll need these as well for washing your tank and your cans and um, you need a source of hot water where you're able to clean your enough hot water for your dairy as well as all your cans and buckets and so on so that all generally we set that all up at the milk uh, where the milk tank is if your pastures are ideal you'll only be feeding in the bush dairy itself during milking 
but often towards the beginning and end of the rainy season you will have to supplement some food and uh, it's a real waste to pour the food on the ground. Um, one option is to use a tarpaulin and put it in front of the e-fence, you see the e-fence here, put that on the, on the ground so the cows don't walk all over it and the cows can then, uh, you pour your food on there and the cows eat off that. It's better than just putting it on the ground but ideally you want to make up or buy some of these very simple type of troughs so that you're pouring your food in there and the cows aren't wasting it and, and, and just uh, stamping it into the ground. On, uh, on feed, um, if you're going to be making silage, you need to consider the, 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 all the things that are required in growing maize, uh, which obviously you, you have to work out for yourself, but you need, uh, you can either hire or buy the tractor, the implements, the planter, the seed, the fertilizer, um, all of those basics that you'll need to grow maize silage. And then come harvest time, there's, a, there's another list of things to consider. How are you going to harvest? Um, there are contractors available now uh, that will come and cut your silage for you, which is obviously the way forward um, because it's so expensive to buy that equipment. And then you need to consider where you're going to put your silage. Are you going to put it into a silage sausage? Are you going to dig pits in the ground? Are you going to make bunks on, on the surface? So another list of things to consider is how, how are you going to make your silage and how are you going to store it. You need your dairy meals, as I've mentioned, to feed in the parlor. And then you'll need things like your calf starter for your calves and your calf grower as they get bigger. A couple of other things like salt licks we recommend. And during the dry season, you may need a dry cow meal and probably a steam up meal for um, just before the cows calf. During the winter, when you're uh, the dry period, you may, if you've got decent grazing, you may get away with giving your cattle a, a winter block or, or some winter cubes or something like that. So all of that needs to be part of your plan. You, have, you, you also have to be prepared for your calf rearing. Um, obviously, that's one of the side things of dairy. You take the calf away from the mother and thereafter it's your responsibility. So ideally you want a means of feeding it with colostrum, like this uh, calf starter bottle. And thereafter, you need a, a milk feeder to be able to give the calves the required milk in the right form. With extensive bush uh, dairying, you have uh, all your calves born at one time, so you need a lot of uh, space for them. You can get up to 10 calves per mars pen, so that's over there. You can see we've got at least 80 calves at one time. A simple way of, and quick way of rearing them. Um, after weaning, when they come out of the mars pens, you then need some small, preferably well grassed uh, paddocks, and uh, these where we then put the calves after weaning until they're big enough to go out into the big paddocks in the bush.